Hi, Internet viewers. Frank Rauscher, one more time. Here we go. Uh, in the last video, we marked up the head of the ch chickadee, and we located the eyes, the beak, and so on. We marked them all out. Now I'm going to show you how to relieve it out of the wood with the different bits I have. So uh, bear with me, and I'll move things down and we'll proceed on. Okay. One thing I want to do that's a little different than what I did from the last video was we had marked out the beak here and we have this beak line, which is the reference line that I had coming through on both sides. Uh, what I want to do on the beak line, the beak is where it's split in half here, is slightly arced up and then slightly arced back down again, right to the point. So it bends up a little bit. So I'm gonna ask you to come off the tip of the beak very slightly, come up above and then come back down. So it looks like it just barely has a, a slight arc. Now, in the interim, while I was moving the camera around, I spilled some water on the on the the blank. So, if you see this is being dark here, this is all wet. But we're doing everything up front here, thank God, which is dry. And I just happened to make a mess here at the time. So I'm going to end up putting my optimizers on, which are these guys here. And I always try to use more magnification than I can so I can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to burn. I got my burner up. Yep. And run it. And I'm going to stick my burning pen right in and arc that a little bit. And then I'm going to come in this side and I'm going to push my pen in on the back end here. And then as I come up, I'm going shy on the end. Well, let me just crease it just a hair. There you go. So make sure that they both meet and you're looking straight down the barrel there. You want to do that with the burning pen and that will act as a stop among other things that we do to uh, create the beat. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, if I haven't explained before uh, with the micro grinder, I'm going to bring this one into the picture. These are a RAM product. This is the handpiece. And this is the, the control box and you turn on the machine this way, and you can dial up your speed this way, or th like this. I usually run everything out in full. You also have it uh, going forward and reverse, and in this case here, they do make it so that you have a foot pedal or by hand. I always have it on the hand part, so that that's the way it works. So I'm using this. You don't really see this. Most of the time you see me with the handpiece in the picture. So I'm going to put this off to the side. I'm going to come in and to change a bit on these, which is really simple. You just hold this here. You click this towards you. This releases the bit. And then you put the bit in and then go the opposite way and it locks in place and then you're ready to go. So I'm going to use the bullet in this case. You could use the Ruby Flame, which is this one here. Either one will do it. It's going into a point and that's what I'm looking for here at the moment. And I'm going to do this. Where we had that line of action that came, we, we measured back on a, 
on a flat, I believe. It was about uh, 5 sixteenths from the tip of the beak up. And then we came out on a 45 degree angle. And then when we hit the, the wall here, we pulled back and slide into this corner, which was 5 sixteenths back on both sides, okay? So what I'm gonna do right at this point here, I'm going to undercut. You know what? I think I'm going to go back to the ruby. Some of my bits uh, are a little worn. I think the ruby's going to cut better, so I'm going to try this one. Hopefully, this will be better. And that happens as you go. I probably have other uh, bullets and stuff like that that probably are sharper. This one here is cutting better, I think. So, I outlined, and let me just show you as close as I can get it here. Here's the pencil line that I undercut it. I'm undercutting along that pencil line, and I drove this down. Now, you have a center line of a beak, and you have the burned area down here. So I'm gonna come and I'm gonna go from the center line down to the burn and have everything sloping from the center line of the beak right on back. And I didn't take a lot out in there. I only took a little bit out. And let me put the center line back in. I sort of hit that. Didn't want to. I want to keep the center on. So everything's flat from here to here. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side now. Okay. So I'm going to come in here. Lay that right on its edge. Hope you can see them as well. I don't walk my way off the camera. And then I tried to get all the material that was there sloping from the burn to the center. And there it is right there. So you have planes of action like this. You have this from here to here sloping and from here to here sloping okay and that's all we're doing we're not rounding anything off at all now i'm going to come back in and enhance this so that you could see it we we came out coming forward with like a slight arc and we did the same thing here it was like a slight arc and then everything slid up to the point. And we did the same thing over here. From that arc, we slid up. Now, there's material that we want to take out. And I also said when we get to this edge here, we're going to come across right here like this. So that little bit of material that is showing below this line, I'm going to just grind off. And it's ever so slight. So I'm just going to come in. And I'm using the limits of my pencil lines. So I'm taking a little bit off on the bottom. Just flattening it at the moment. Okay, so from that little bit of an arc forward here, this had some material. There's more on this side than there was on that side. So I'm going to go back in. And here's the pencil line. Here's that little bit of an arc. And then I was saying that this is going to come over here 
and join up with this one. And here's that pencil line right there. So we have a flat from one side to the other. Now, I'm going to put the center line of the head back in there. Now, what I'm going to do is from that center line to that burn, I'm going to slope it just like I did the top. We're going to make like a diamond. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. From here to here, I'm going to slope it. So that line's going to disappear. I'm going to show you how to do that too. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to flatten from here to the center line. And I'm just, and you want to do this very carefully so you don't take too much out. Because it's only taking a little bit off at this stage of the game. And then I'm doing the same thing on this side. Right to the center line. So what we have is everything coming to a point in your angle this way and this way and on the bottom this way and this way. Okay. Let's see if I got everything just so. Uh, I'm going to touch up the top. Okay. Now, I'm going to get my pencil and run it in there so you can see this a little bit more. You can see the the depth that I take out. Sometimes there's more material on one side than there is the other side. And if I look at this one right now, if I look down this center line, I see I have less material on this side and more on this. And what's happening is the beak the width of the beak is from the center line out an eighth of an inch. So this is probably right on the money. This one has to come in a little bit more. So what I'm going to do right along here and right along here, I hope you can see all this. I am going to take this down a little bit right in the corner just a hair because it's just a little too full so on this side there was more material so this is wider right at this spot back in the corner here so i'm going to come in and just take that in a little bit like that i didn't lose the burn so I, that's just lucky or i would go back in and reburn it then i'm going to get the slope back in so top and bottom and i'll take a look at it again yeah we're pretty close now okay so i don't know if you see that well my thing plugged in there so we have quadrants here now we have all this sloping up this is sloping up this is sloping up and this is sloping up and they're almost flat okay and that's what we want right now now uh we're going to leave the beak go for the moment and then we're going to come in and we're going to drill the eyes out and i'm going to show you how to do that this here was uh, a ruby ball but you can get a diamond ball doesn't matter. And I use them like a burnisher after the, after I use them so many times they get blackened. You can even use a stone, but the stone may fracture on you and that's the carbon silicate ones. So I get this and you see the line of action at the top between the two eyes. I want to go in that direction and I want to drill in so that I'm a little past this upper line here where we had the reduction on the head uh, so i'm going to come in 
I'm not going to go all the way, but I'm aiming in that line of direction. So it literally burns its way in. So I want to get the ball so it looks like it's almost into, into the bird as I'm looking at it like that, okay? So, even if it's not deep enough, we can always go back and do this when we're ready to set the eyes and get that straight. So don't worry about that too, too much. Here, we're pretty close again. And like I said, I took material off on this side when we were rounding the body. So, and a lot of you, depending on how I cut the, the blank, like I said before, you may have more material on here that you got to bring in. So it makes this a little chubbier on this side. So that isn't always the case, but that's, you know, when I cut it, I don't cut it. I cut it pretty close to being perfect, but it's how fat you want to make it. Now I'm drilling this eye out. And the ball, if I put it in there, is almost inside there. So if you can get the ball that looks like it went into the wood, and that's good enough, okay, for now. So now we got the eyes drilled out. And what we need to do now is we got to get the cheek going, and we want to bring that out. And we said on the cheek, if I remember correctly here, we want to be at least 7 sixteenths wide right now. If I measured that real quick, looking from the center line of the head out, and I put a measurement on that. Right now, if we're straight on, we're probably about five eighths so we got to come back a good bit so here's how we do it we do this gradually i get i'm going to get a pair and let's see i'm gonna plug in the pair let me get a better ruby clover than this one this is my best one. Here we go. I'll try this one. This is a, a ruby pear, but uh, anymore I have a hard time getting these. They're, they're hard to get a hold of anymore. So what I do is I use a, a, a diamond pear, which is the same, we'll do the same thing. And what I'm gonna do is you have a line that goes right through the beak, right here that we established. This is the cheek. We're going to, let me shut this off a second. We are going to come in and we're going to run right on the line. The middle of the bit is going to be right on that line. When we get to this point back here, we're going to go behind the line all the way down and up to the beak. So, uh, like I said, we're, we're going to lay the beak on the middle here. But once we get back to here where it starts curving around, we're going to go to the outside. And I'll show you how to do that. And this is a channel. This is an eye channel that is here. And, it, and actually, the channel is going to be going out further. But right at the moment, we're going to lay this bit right on the line, the line will disappear. You're gonna undercut right through there, like so. You're not gonna come up onto the beak yet. You wanna get that channel in there. Now, if you can see from the center out to this line, we gotta go at least that far in on this channel. So 
I need to take more off. So I'm going to lay this in here. And you can see, if I put a pencil mark, I mean a pencil point right there, I'm getting close to that pencil looking straight down. So I'm trying to go to the depth. And that's pretty close. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side here. I'm going to lay this right on that line and bring it back. 